Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Serge. So today we're gonna to talk about the new Surface laptop. This is the four gigabyte model. And I asked myself, could I do everything I wanted on this laptop on the four gigabyte model? It's really surprising to see that Microsoft released a laptop that's four gigabytes as opposed to the eight gigabyte models out there. But we're gonna talk about all the models today and I'm gonna tell you which one is right for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna do a quick unboxing. We'll talk about the design, uh, how this laptop is crafted and all that. We'll do some testing on it and we'll talk about gaming. So let's Let's take a look at the review. All right, so let's pop this bad boy open. Got my handy dandy knife here. Let's open this up. Oh yeah, nice satisfying shrink wrap. Let's get that removed. Yeah, all right. Wow, look at that. That's really, really simple design. I like it. All right, let's take a look at the charger real quick. One thing I've always been fond of with Microsoft is their chargers. They have these magnetic based chargers, which are really awesome. They even have a built in phone charger or built in mobile device charger. So you can plug in like your Android devices or your iPhones. And then here's the magnetic charger, it just clips on. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let's take the shrink wrap off of the actual laptop. Man, this thing's light. Wow. All right, let's peel that off. Wow, what an elegant design. I'm really surprised that Microsoft actually made something like this. It's very simple. It's a unibody, so there's not a lot of pieces to it. It's like one solid metal piece. It's really, really nice. Very, very light, very durable. If you press on it, there's no flexing anywhere. It's a very sturdy device. Oh, look at that. Check out that keyboard and trackpad. There's actually a cloth-like material on the inside. We have a USB port, a mini display port, headphone jack, and then we have an antenna band on the side. Here we have the actual charger. And here's what it actually looks like when you're plugging it in. And then a little light turns on to show that you're charging. One thing that I noticed is sometimes when you're trying to plug it in, Sometimes it, it misses it and it still connects, but it, the actual connection points don't connect. So it doesn't actually charge, which is kind of troublesome. So you have to readjust it when you're connecting it sometimes to get it to work. One thing that I've always wanted laptops to have is the ability to open them up with one finger. And I think that's a great addition. I first saw this in the uh, MacBook Airs back in uh, 2015. I thought it was a very useful feature because with a lot of the older laptops, when you're trying to open them up, you have to like use both hands to just basically pry it open, which is, I think is really, really annoying. It's possible that oils could build up here and you won't really be able to get them out very easily because it's a cloth-like material. So it kind of creates a different type of problem. But even though that problem is present, I actually think that the cloth-based material on here is actually really soft and comfortable. When you're typing, when you're resting your hands on there, it really just kind of feels very natural. And in the past you'd be doing, it would be like either like a warm plastic or it would be like cold metal, but this is actually, it's very unique and it's very interesting to see that Microsoft's actually trying to innovate. They're trying to do something different. And I really gotta give them props for that. Pretty cool. One of the things that Microsoft really nailed on this device is the amazing keyboard. I absolutely love this keyboard. The keys feel really clicky. They have very good travel. So as you can see, I'm pressing down, nothing's happening. That's because that's where the hinges are located. But one thing Microsoft's lacking behind in is the, the trackpad technology. So the trackpad itself feels nice and smooth. Click at the bottom just fine, but as you approach the top, the clicking becomes a little bit harder, which I find annoying. And it's just a feature that they really just have to fix. Pretty much any laptop out there that you're gonna buy nowadays, you can click at the top just fine. And it's just kind of one of the older type of styles that they've been using. And it's like, it doesn't make any sense why they even have that. I wanna ask you guys a question, which particular model are you thinking about getting? Are you gonna get one of the higher end models of this laptop? Or are you thinking about getting a different type of laptop? If you guys have questions, be sure to leave them down below. And I will be definitely getting back to you guys. All right. The other thing I noticed about this laptop is the uh, screen's uh, ratio. It's a three by four screen ratio, so it's different than what you're used to, and, and it kind of reminds me of a piece of paper, which is kind of cool. 
it is a touchscreen, which is quite nice, and the resolution is pretty high on it, so I think it's kind of kind of a pretty decent screen. My only complaint with it is that it's just has way too much glare. It has to be the most glare-filled screen uh, that I've ever seen, and I'm not sure why this is the case. You'd think they'd put anti-glare material-based uh, screen on here, but for some reason it just isn't. One of the other things I kind of also didn't really like was these little rubber feet actually don't do a very good job of keeping the laptop secure. So when you place it on the ground, it does tend to move around a lot when you open it up. So it actually slides back when you when you open it up. That's because the rubber feet don't have enough uh, surface area on the ground. So the thing moves and the rubber feet just aren't very effective. Just kind of a little annoying nit nitpicking thing that I kind of noticed, which I kind of don't like. This laptop also doesn't have an SD card slot, which is kind of annoying because if you are somebody who takes pictures with the camera or video, you won't really be able to put your SD card slot in here. Um, there is a slot that kind of resembles an SD card slot, but this is actually the charging unit. If you watched this far, thank you for watching. And I wanted to inform you that if you had any questions that I am answering all questions in the comment section below. So be sure to subscribe and ask a question and I'll definitely be getting back to you. All right, so let's talk about gaming. So I've uh, decreased the graphics down to medium. We have it at 1920 by 1080p and uh, it still lags. I've figured out that Counter-Strike pretty much is uh, resolution dependent and it really has nothing to do with the textures. So just put the resolution down to 1400 by uh, 1050 and you should have playable frame rates at around 50 to 60. Same story with League of Legends. Essentially just decrease the resolution down to uh, either 1080p or something a little below that and you can keep the graphics the textures and all that maxed out and it's gonna look pretty good and uh, yeah plays really well actually if you wanted to do some light gaming on here you could definitely do it one of the biggest downsides is actually the noise level that this laptop makes it makes around 45 decibels and it gets extremely loud so I don't recommend using it in a quiet area as it, as it will get loud if you ramp up the CPU usage to around 80% now the thermals of this laptop are actually what make it very interesting because it has the cloth insulation at the top you actually don't feel a lot of heat you feel some heat at the bottom metal aluminum portion when it's like resting on your lap but when you have your arms on the palm rest it's only about 35 to 40 celsius which is really surprising for a laptop that's made from metal and then you also have a little vent in the back here which is totally normal you see this on all kinds of laptops gaming will make it hot but it's it's not really a problem All right, so first things first, let's talk about this laptop's shortcomings. So the four gigabyte RAM is only gonna be limiting for content creators. If you're just a student and you're going to college and you're not a content creator of any type, you're probably not gonna to need to get the higher gigabyte model. Four gigabytes is good enough for just about anything you might do out there, except for things like uh, video editing, um, like doing 3D modeling, doing simulation type work, anything that's a very compute intensive task, and if you even have to ask, then chances are you don't need the eight gigabyte RAM. I've noticed that even with four gigabytes, I'm able to do just about everything that I wanna do on the laptop. I don't have too many issues with just browsing the web or doing a little bit of gaming on the side. Everything seems to work. But note that if you are a content creator, this will be a limiting factor for you. And based on the pricing, Microsoft kind of makes this laptop a little bit more expensive than all the other laptops out there. If you take a look at, at this little list that I created, you'll see that the, at the price range, you're realistically kind of overpaying and, and getting underperforming specs. But in most scenarios, like I was telling you earlier, the four gigabyte will work, but there are other options out there for you. So keep that in mind when shopping. So Microsoft sells a couple different computing devices. You have the Surface Studio, which is their desktop counterpart. And then you also have the Surface Pro lineup, which they've already released about five different Surface Pros. And then you have the Surface Book, which is basically a much more premium laptop that you can buy that has the dedicated graphics option. But now they've released this Surface laptop, shockingly thin. If you look at it, it has these nice little edges that taper off and it feels extremely comfortable when you're holding it. It's really light. And if there's any device out there that, that, that this kind of resembles or it gets close to, it's probably the Dell XPS or maybe the MacBook Air in terms of the portability and lightness of it. If you need a portable base laptop, this one's really gonna do quite well. One thing is for certain, the exterior chassis design, how smooth it is and silky and just how plain and simple looking it is. 
there's really nothing like it out there right now. I think this is really close to maybe even the MacBooks in terms of design. And I know some of you might be cringing out there when they say, oh, Mac, because there's a lot of Apple haters out there. But if you really haven't had a chance to play around with it, check it out. I highly recommend you do. Um, Go into a, a Microsoft store and try to see if you can play around with one of these and also go inside a, a Apple store and see what their devices are like because they actually feel really nice and they're very metallic and sturdy and it's something that Apple pioneered like back in 2012. Just crazy to see a lot of other brands are finally catching up, finally starting to use metal in their laptops instead of just pure plastic. I wanted to thank you guys for watching this far. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, I highly recommend it because you'd make a great subscriber. If you have questions I haven't answered, I'm definitely gonna be sticking around to answer all of your guys' questions. So be sure to leave a comment down below and we can have a discussion about which laptop you should get or any other, uh, or any other type of tech-related question that you may have. Just leave a like and comment down below and we'll definitely get to talking about it. I wanted to ask you guys, which laptops should I review next? I know a lot of you are looking at other brands out there. There's a few newer brands out there like Razer and a couple other gaming based laptop brands out there. And I, I wanna review all of them. I wanna be a tech channel that you guys can trust and go to often for all of your tech needs. So if there's a particular type of tech that I have not covered, I want you to leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of video you want me to make. The whole point of YouTube is to be interactive and to communicate with you guys, and that's what I'm trying to do. So let's communicate. Thanks for watching and definitely check out some of the cards here at the end. I have one video about how to make your own PC. You don't have to follow the brand. You can go rogue and build it yourself. I also have a couple videos about some Apple related products and even some uh, other brands like Dell. Take a look in the cards section and vote for the type of thing you want to see and uh, I'd love to see you in the next one. Cheers.